In this video, we're going to be talking about how to speed up polars even more. NVIDIA just dropped an incredible new Rapids QDF technology that accelerates polars even further. So in this video, I'm going to show you a pre-release version of this that I had the opportunity to play around with. We'll dive into how to enable this without any code changes. This is really exciting and can really dramatically speed up your workflow. And as you can see, it even works in Google Collaboratory. So what we're going to do is we're going to dive right in. We're going to make sure that we're running a GPU up here. And if you're running a CPU, you'll want to switch it. Now, like I mentioned, I am running a pre-release version of this. So I'm going to put a comment in the description below in order to show you how to actually install this once it does go live. Now, to get started, let's import polars and check the version number. We can see here that we're running version 1.5.0. We want to make sure that we're running at least this version. Now we're going to be using some open data sets from New York City's Taxi Information Service. Now we're going to be pulling this data directly as per K files. We're only going to be using 2023 20, data from February through December. Now this might seem a little silly, but January does have a slightly different schema and I don't want to focus about that on this video. So for now, let's make sure that we're using this curl command here, and I'll include all of this in the description as well so you can download the data to follow along. What this is going to do is it's going to download all of the files. We can see that each file is around 50 megabytes large. Now because these are parquet files, they are relatively compressed. So we can see here that all of our files have now downloaded. We can make sure that they're all available to us by running the ls command we can see that we have our 11 files listed here. So what we can do now is create a list comprehension here. And what this is going to do is really just list out all of the files. So let's go ahead and make sure that this actually works. What we can see here is that we now have a list of all of the different files available to us. We can scan this into a lazy data frame. So what this will allow us to do is really collect information about that schema and only actually load whatever we need to when we uh, run our analysis. We may want to take a look at the first five records available in our combined data frame. For this, we can use the dot head method and combine it with the collect method. So right now we're just running plain old polars, but what we can see here is that we have a data frame that's pretty wide but also relatively long. Let's take a second to understand all of the different columns available to us. We can see here that we've got 19 different columns. All of them have different data types. Some of them are integers, some of them are date times, some of them are floats. So let's see what we can do with this. We can explore our data frame just a little bit more. Let's get a sense of its full dimensions. For this, we can first collect the data frame load it into memory, and then access the shape. We can see here that our combined data frame has 35 million rows and 19 different columns. Now, this already seems like it's going to be a fairly big data frame to work with, but let's get a sense of the estimated size of it. For that, we're going to collect the data frame again and access the estimated size method and print it out in gigabytes. We can see here that our data frame is 4.34 gigabytes large. Now, this isn't the biggest data frame, but because I'm running this on a free tier of Google Collab, I wanted to make sure that we didn't exceed our space and RAM limits. So let's start off by doing some simple analysis here. The first thing that we're going to do is really just add up this total amount column, and this will give us a sense of how we can check the accuracy of our data. So what we can see here is that the total amount sum adds up to this value here. Um, we can time how long this takes on a CPU by running this cell again, just using this uh, percent percent time decorator. So what we're going to see here is that the entire thing took 0.453 seconds. Now, this is where things get really exciting. What we can do in order to enable the Rapids QDF functionality is make one single change. We can pass in engine equals GPU 
into our collect method. So what we're going to do here is time this and see how long it takes this time. Now NVIDIA has shared with me that the first time you run this, this may take longer. And this is just because the GPU has to warm up. So we can actually see here that indeed this took four to five times longer than just running it on the CPU. But what we can see now is if we rerun this again, that this actually decreased to 25% of its original uh, time taken. So we can already see, just for simple analyses here, massive savings in the amount of time things take. Now, what about more complex analysis? Let's dive into running a group by using polars here. What we can do here is run this group by statement where we're first grouping everything by the payment type column, then aggregating to find the average fare amount, and then sort all of this again by the payment type column. And we're going to run this once on the CPU and once on the GPU. So let's see how long this takes. We can see here that this analysis took 2.13 seconds. Now that's not a huge amount of time, but it's also not a massive data set. So remember, it's only four gigabytes large. If you're working with something that's 20 gigabytes, this might take significantly longer. Now, let's see how much time we can save by using the Rapids QDF functionality here. We can click play here. We can see that this took a fraction of a second. So in this case, we're actually almost seven times faster for a much more complex query. So now, one of the really exciting things, and this is the final thing I'll share with you today, is the interoperability between GPU and CPU data frames. We can see here that all of our data are really listed as integers. What we can do is capture this information using its string labels. So based on the data dictionary that uh, New York City provides, we can create a CPU data frame here by passing in this dictionary based on these labels here. So when we run this, we can see that we get a data frame returned. Now, what's great about this is that all we need to do is turn this data frame into a lazy frame by passing against it the dot lazy method. And what we can see here is when we first run this on the CPU, that this is going to take a little bit of time to merge in the data and then group by a similar statement that we did before. So what we can see here is that we've actually been able to create this data frame where rather than using the integer labels, we're now using the string labels. And this took nearly five and a half seconds. Now let's see how long this takes on the GPU. We can see that again, this took just 0.3 seconds. This is a massive savings in time, and it's incredible what NVIDIA and Polaris have done here. Super excited to dive more into this in the future. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'm really excited to be able to create more content just like this. I'm really curious to hear what you're interested in learning about. Thanks and see you next time.